we hate to leave our dogs out of all of the holiday spirit and fun, and sometimes that can mean bringing them along on our family trips. But bringing dogs into a new home where another pet already rules the roost can be difficult at times. And that's why we invited Mark Shambor of Canine Corral to explain how dogs greet each other, which is different from humans, and how we can help <laughs> them stay calm during the holidays. Welcome, Mark. I have two little dogs that live with me. We need your advice. Show us how the dogs greet each other at your place at Canine Corral. Well, I have some pictures here to show you, and I tried to keep it as PG as I could. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's usually what they do, yes. <laughs> There's Gracie and that's uh, Elsa. And, you know, they greet from the behind. That's where they get all the information. That's sort of like shaking hands in the yeah. dog world? Definitely. There's Harpo, and uh, that's one of our dogs <laughs> that left, Harley. She, she moved away. This is after they Aww. greet from the behind. Okay. Then they'll do a face. That's, those two are wonderful dogs. That's Koopa, Cooper and Lady. Lady's been with us for uh, quite some time. Oh, how cute. Uh, Right there, you've got two in the back there greeting. That's uh, <laughs> Lady again. And uh, Nilla is actually the one that's saying hey and looking up at us. And, and, and sitting down and making yeah. it difficult. <laughs> yes, definitely. And there we have Ahi, which is a hairless, pervy and hairless, actually. Oh, wow. And that's Nikki. She's kind of doing the whole greet there, too. <laughs> but that's how they greet. And uh, there's Brad with a new dog, Rico. And that's Nilla again doing the whole greet from the behind. <laughs> that's they so need funny. They know what they ate. You know, that's how it works. Yeah, it's where all the information is. <laughs> how do we get two dogs, two visiting dogs, to greet each other? Well, you know, you might have had a bad experience maybe over the holiday weekend or, um, you know, with company, like you said, with people coming and visiting. I like to do everything outside to start with. Uh, neutral area, uh, maybe not necessarily where you walk, not in your yard, but across the street or somewhere where it's not a normal walk for your dog that stays at the house. Mm -hmm. Is that a territory thing? Because the yeah. dog would recognize that as his own? Well, we want it as neutral as possible. Oh, okay. Yeah. Then what I like to do is uh, go for a walk, let one dog follow the other one, and then uh, reverse it and let the other dog follow that so they get that sniff just like what we saw. Okay. Oh, okay. And then you can actually crisscross too. However it works, you're looking for signs of the dogs actually, their body language or, you know, are they happy? Are they interested? Uh, are they snarling? If they're snarling, you're not going to go any further. Okay. Um, so you reverse it. And then uh, what I like you to do is walk side by side, people inside, dogs on the outside. So as you walk side by side, then the dogs are you know, they, they are right not, not right next to each other. Okay. And they're walking, and you want to see how they walk and how they react and if they, you know, are, are giving them eye contact and stuff like that. And then, um, if all that goes well, we do what's called my Mark's 3-in-1 rule. Uh -huh. And this is where we're going to demonstrate. And um, what happens is you walk together like you would normally walk on a walk, a regular walk, mm -hmm. okay. and you let the dog sniff face to face, three quick seconds. Oh, well, let's try it, because I want to yeah, see okay. it in action. I've got Brad we here. We need another dog. And okay. we need Wrigley. We have We've Wrigley, got our guy dog. Does it make here. any difference, hey, Mark, if it's a large dog and a small dog? Well, you have to, well, first of all, if it's on a regular walk, you have to ask. Sometimes the small dogs and big dogs, just, it's not worth a try, you know. All right, um, let's bring him on. And it Wrigley, does make a difference. Excitement. All right, so, oh, Stephanie, you're going to let your dog go with Wrigley. Uh, right next to Nilla, oh, three oh. quick <laughs> seconds. So come forward Okay. on this side, one, two, three. Now take a step forward so his head is at her butt. Okay. And right there. Okay, so this gathering. is what we're looking oh, for. Yep, exactly. we got it. <laughs> he found it. And you want to make sure you don't crisscross. And at this point, if they actually liked each other and things are going good now like it is, yep. you could let them play, you could, oh, or look. you would go on your way. The thing is, is you don't want them to go head to head for too long. You look at your dog, not the other dog. You want to look Off. at you to make sure your dog is the one that's acting uh, correctly. And you can oh. see how well your dog is trained. This is he excellent. Not awesome. oh, this is Nilla. This is one of our rescues that we actually oh, have Nilla, adopted. You did so good. She had uh, quite a few puppies, oh, <laughs> but we've since She's spayed her. She's very calm. I mean, the puppy jumps. The puppy does things that can be a little annoying to another and dog. And she understands it's, that. She was uh -huh. very, yeah. very She's good about that. She's been around kids for a long time. And we're back to introducing each other. <laughs> so uh, you know, Nilla's our official greeter. We adopted her. Like I said, she had a lot of puppies. Uh, Brad is one of our junior trainers at the corral. He helps out quite a bit. Hi. And, um, you know, at this point, if, if this were not a regular greet, but it was part of the family introducing a, a dog to another, 
you would make sure you remove all the bones from the house, mm -hmm. food, Toys. shoes, and then let the new dog go into the house first okay. and let the visiting, or I'm sorry, yeah, the new dog uh -huh. first and then the dog that lives there second. That way it removes some of that territorial issues. And then, you know, still you have to watch them in the house. Something that you might not think is territorial to a dog could definitely be. So you got to kind of think like the dog. Right. Okay. Well, it play turns into roughhousing very quickly for dogs, yes. similar to toddlers. Right. So right. you have to be ready to draw the line, I've learned. That's when they go yeah. in the backyard. And when you yeah. have big <laughs> dogs, it can get bad when they start to roughhouse. Yeah, and you always want to, you know, even if you have to say enough, sometimes you just want to calm it down before it escalates. Right. Well, I think these two yeah, could they, certainly they, they like each other. Yeah, they, they, see, they do great. They <laughs> both went back to relaxing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They get all their information if and now only, they're good. If only we can get that to happen at our home. Yes, yeah. we can get that with My children that. aren't this well behaved. Well, <laughs> when you guys walk on a walk, ask the people that are on the walk if they can greet. Sarasota does mm -hmm. not give dogs that comfort zone. I don't know why, maybe we're really friendly. But you should always ask, because mm -hmm. you don't know if that other dog is friendly or not. Yes, good advice. You want to ask. Thank you, Mark. Thank you so much. You're welcome. You can visit caninecorralsrq.com for more information. And coming up next, what's my line? We're going to play a game and see if we can figure it out. Oh, I love that dog. Oh, she's sweet. She's sweet. She's so she's